All right, I got my pen and I got my notebook and we have things to talk about with respect to labs. So let's go ahead and do a stand up first um, for whoever is here in T minus one minute. And then um, it'd be, I think it'd be good to talk about Remote Lab South and development and building and budgets and floor plans. I have some, some things to run by you all. Uh, hello, Michelle. Um, this is uh, N3RDX. Oh, hello there. Good to see you. Uh, is it open to, to participate today? Uh, yeah, always is, every Tuesday. I haven't uh, uh, had a chance to um, uh, contribute uh, for a while. No, oh, no problem. We take whatever we can get and appreciate it. All right, it's 10. All right, let's do a brief uh, roundup. Uh, stand up meeting. Uh, what we do during a stand up is talk about what we've done over the past week, what we have planned to do over the next week, uh, if we have any resources that we need, and or if we have any roadblocks in our way. Um, so, and if, if it's okay to have no report. Um, so, let's see. I will. Uh, oh, hi, Leonard. Hello. We're just starting the stand up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go down the um, the list of participants in the order that they appear to me, and then uh, call on folks. So um, I'll I'll go ahead and kick it off. Over the past week, what I've been doing is a lot of writing and uh, writing articles uh, and papers and things like that to kind of catch us up on some documentation for things that we need for the uplink, and that is coming along really well. Uh, so there will be some some stuff published. Um, what I've done over the past number, a uh, small number of weeks is give a lot of presentations about the uplink protocol and, and try to help make sure that it's uh, sturdy. Um, so that's what I've been up to. The next, over the next week is all sorts of uh, efforts to, to try to get the end-to-end -end demos that are gonna happen in August at DEF CON working. That'll be the first of our round of uh, autumn demonstrations and, and presentations. So it kicks off in August with DEF CON, the, very, the next thing after that. Um, so August, September and September of 2022 is Ham Expo, which has treated us really, really well. And we'll be participating in Ham Expo this year. Uh, and then in, I um, believe November, we are the presentation at the San Bernardino Microwave Society, and that will be recorded. So that's another opportunity for in-person demonstrations of, of what we have. So I'm trying to keep the schedule as clear as possible from now through August so that we have plenty of time to actually get things done. Uh, so I've wound down um, events and things like that. I don't have any roadblocks other than the usual complaints of not enough time. Uh, and I think we've got all the resources that we need. The only exception is that we still have a problem with using FPGA in the loop with MATLAB HDL coder and haven't heard back from, from MATLAB. So I'll circle back around and see if they can help us. This is something that's supposed to work and is supposed to be the primary way that they support, um, you know, uh, working with a DSP for the things that they, um, the, the things that MATLAB supports. So, so I know that there's a lot of emphasis on this and that the fact that it's failing for us at the very last step which is the FPGA in the loop in the lab uh, is uh, still a little bit concerning. I'm optimistic that we can figure it out and have volunteered us uh, to be like the guinea pig to do the, the testing with MATLAB uh, staff to figure out why a remote application doesn't work when it should. The, the alternative, the backup plan, if we can't figure this particular problem out is to simply generate the uh, bitstream and then do it in a more traditional fashion. It would just be really nice to have the, the test bench within MATLAB and everything handled and uh, proceed forward um, in a more automated way. That would be pretty cool. Okay, so that's everything that I know. Uh, the next person on the list is Anshul. You have the floor. Yeah, sure. So uh, I was able to uh, generate the bootable image with uh, Bitstream for ZC706, but the board didn't boot. So I'm on oh. that, I'm debugging that. 
uh, apart from that, um, I was involved with TV, TVP receiver. Um, there are some issues over that. So yeah, that's that's by a week. I couldn't progress much further. But yeah, debugging that and trying to resolve it. <laughs> well, sounds Sometimes. like a lot of sounds like a lot of progress to me. Um, you know, <laughs> you're you're, you're doing some very difficult things. So uh, please just reach out anytime you you, you can uh, for, yeah. for help. So it's uh, well worth doing. Yeah, I mean that's the step. Maybe I mean there are so many factors: kernel, U boot, uh, to debug and find out what's going wrong. So yeah, we'll spend more time this week. Okay. Yeah. Looking forward to uh, looking forward to the results. Sure. Thank you. All right, James, you have the floor. Uh, nothing too much to report this week. We had a couple of weather incidents at Remote Lab South, though. Uh, both those. We had no issues with the equipment except for one moment where we had our local chub go down for a bit. And we're still trying to figure out what caused that error, but it doesn't seem like we had any data loss. So we're doing fairly well on our end, and we're continuing uh, preparing stuff for our build out. Cool. Which we'll be discussing later. Yes. Yeah, yeah we'll do that. We'll what we'll do is uh, is close out the stand up and then move right into that if you have time. Cool. Okay, uh, Leonard, you have the floor. Okay, um, I, I really don't have anything new to report with respect to the FPGA. Um, I've been sick for the last couple of days and whatnot, and also been busy for the last few weeks. I do, I did want to do like a little uh, demo, um, and this is uh, kind of in line with what we've touched on uh, bef before. Where um, do do we have a a plan of attack for the receiver, um, and uh, how are we going to? What, what are we going to do for timing sync and um, and uh, carrier sync on that? So I, that, that was a question. Um, I was playing around with a couple of GNU radio blocks to kind of uh, get familiar with, um, you know, some things that we could do. I do have. Uh, the two Plutos run, and I can show um, more or less what I'm talking about. If you, if you want to share a screen. Oh yeah, sure. That'd be that'd be good. Why don't we uh, go ahead and do that now? You have the you have the con. Okay, hold up. Um, part of this is uh, uh, too many screens open. Um, all right, so share screen, <laughs> and then uh, screen two share. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Um, basically, yeah, we see a uh, GNU radio flow graph with all the usual suspects. Thank you. So this is a CAN DVBS2 uh, demo that they have. I've modified it slightly. Um, <clears throat> so the, the I had talked to Paul about this a while back, but Pluto, um, the sync here, it ex accepts uh, you know a, a, a complex float but it also has a mode where you can do a complex int 16 which is uh, really what the chipset wants to see um, and I was a little bit concerned of uh, if if that was being represented correctly I was never able to get to the bottom of that but uh, mainly because of the conversions that I've had but uh, for the most part I I do think it's it's um, as far as I can tell, it's it's working okay. So, <clears throat> so uh, uh, let me just kind of uh, point you to a couple of settings here. First of all, I'm generating just a simple rate of 150k, and then I'm oversampling those symbols by 16 to get a sample rate of 2.4 meg. That's indicated up here. So we go through uh, the chain just like you normally would. Then on our RRC filter, I do a, a interpolation of 16. And basically because of the way it works and all that, we also need to uh, increase the gain by 16. So um, I could have probably just done it here, but I had an external thing. Then I look at the thing to show us what we're doing. Let me just run that real quick. Um, <clears throat> uh, 
All right, so um, over here on the scope, now we see that the uh, this signal here, th these signals obviously are going into the Pluto. Um, well, kind of. Um, so this is the, the I and the Q signals. You see that they're close to one, which is our normalized uh, complex float, FFT. This is um, the transmitted uh, signal after the, uh, the first RRC. And to, <clears throat> to show us what, um, why isn't this scaling? Anyways, um, then I pass it through a second one so we can get our you know symbols back in, in a nice tidy order. Yeah. And right here, you, you know, we, we see that um, the you know after the first RRC, you're just the way it works, right? Right, I right. To, I, I don't want to go into that. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. For for anybody that doesn't know, when you when you you need a match filter. Yeah. yeah you, yeah, you have to have a match filter. And if you just look at what you transmit, it may look disturbingly ugly and that's on purpose. So, so don't be alarmed. So anyways, uh, this is on the Pluto that's hooked up to the 3.1 on the subnet. Um, it's running at 900 meg, sample rate is out. So the two RRCs are here, right? Here's the one that goes out to the transmitter, gets gained up by 16, goes out. And then here's the other one. So we can see the symbols in nice tidy order over here. And I'm keeping one out of 16, basically. This has got a decimation of 16. And then on this one here, uh, which is basically what, this constellation sync is what goes out to the Pluto. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just keeping one out of 16 here to keep, you know, so we can see them the same way. Otherwise you just see a ball of mess. Now on the receive side, what I have is just the Pluto sync here. I go through a raised cosine filter. I'm keeping one out of six. Um, uh, okay, so decimate by 16, uh, keep one out of one because I was mucking around with this. This doesn't really need to be here. And I have the constellation sync here. And then um, this is where the whole purpose of my talking is, okay, so well, what kind of uh, timing do we wanna see and why does it matter? Uh, first of all, this symbol block here, if you go into the documentation, it's pretty powerful. It's got a lot of neat stuff in there. Um, so these are the different algorithms that you could pick, Gardner, early, late, whatever, you know, maximum likelihood. And we can play around with that. So. If we want to see what the performance of one versus another one is, certainly this is a good block to do it. And then we can code, you know, based on our findings. They've done a pretty thorough job of documenting this as far as I can tell. Um, it's either that or my ignorance. <laughs> Anyways, okay, so let's run this. Um, this is, by the way, this is running on 2.2. And so it's a completely different uh, Pluto. They're separated by let's say a, a couple of feet, not they're They're pretty close to each other. Just yeah, but, but the, the important part is that it's over the air. It is over the air, you're right. Okay, so I'm gonna run that. And um, then I'll dr drag the, the screen over there. Let's see here. Okay, so a lot of interesting things here. Spectrum, kind of what we see, what we expect to see. This one here, uh, scope is, the decimated points, it should be basically your, your um, the scope here should be one out of 16 points. So it's, in, in an ideal case, it would be the symbol. Um, and let's see here, let's see if I can make this bigger. This here is just the kind of real time capture out of the Pluto. So you can see that the, the symbols here are pretty obvious and and there are 16x over samples, so I mean, we can zoom in on that. And is there a way to stop this? Yeah, stop. You know, we can zoom in on that. You can see there should be 16 between here and here. Um, okay, so this constellation here is the one coming directly out of the Pluto. Now, what we're seeing here is um, 
you know, the symbols are coming in and out. Remember, this is decimated by 16 because there's a beat frequency, right? If you time this beat frequency, that will kind of give you the idea of the difference in the two clocks on the two Plutos. Right. Right. On this one here is the constellation, but out of um, out of that sync block, and you, you see it comes in and out. So basically, what's happening is is it's not really a attaining lock. Here's a sync error. You see burst of you know yeah. it's it's noisy. There is you know whatever. Right. So um, you know we we can muck with a with the settings here and and see what make what what would improve it. Um, there's a let's see here. Let, let's let me just try changing this to uh, uh, Garner um, and sixteen Ted to um, I think so. I got to stop it and then restart it. So I, I haven't really been able to get this thing kind of just lock and stay there. Right. Um, it, I don't know what it is. Now, this one here is actually pretty good, right? Uh, but you'll see it. Yeah, so it's, not, see it, it's, it's not doing one, the sync. It's not locking, but it's uh, obviously better. Yeah, see how it just, see how every once in a while it loses lock. Now, there's a couple of reasons for that. I don't, that I'm just guessing. it. Um, the, these Pluto blocks don't really indicate if you're overflowing or underflowing to the interfaces themselves. I'm going to collapse this. So this interface, we have no idea if the computer can keep up with it. What would be nice is if we had some kind of a lock in it, you know, uh, overflow, underflow indicator, like a little virtual LED that's, that blips whenever, you know, the computer doesn't keep up with it. And the same is true on this guy here. We don't know. I, I got a lot of things open. I, there's Zoom running. There's you know, whatever. Oh, so it uh, it w it's not going to be. So those things won't generate the errors that we often see. Well, the, these 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 um, blocks they don't have a an error indication as far as I can tell. I mean, I I don't know how to get it. I know that the IIO interface does have it. There is a way to get to, you know, if there's been a buffer override or underflow, you know. Um, but in GNU radio, like if you, I were to get, I can get through it in Python, but, but certainly not with this thing. So if we could create our own thing, maybe we could do that other, other than that, create our own, like a Python strictly based Python, um, uh, model or, or simulation. I'm not. You know, I, I've really just been exposed to GNU Radio for a very short period of time, so I, I don't know all the ins and outs, and it's um, not real obvious to me. But anyways, um, that that's kind of like what I've been playing with. I, I haven't, um, you, you know, so where, where is this? Okay. Uh, hasn't been that fruitful other than uh, it'd be nice if this thing locked and we can, we can, Kind yeah, of no, that's really the kind of the that's the heart of of any sort of over the air demo is exactly what you're you're looking at is the synchronization. That's the heart. Nothing else happens if without it. And the reason why people avoid uh, doing over the air demos is because it's hard. So this is this is exactly what we need to be paying attention to and figuring out now. I think um, step one would be. Um, you know, the first thing we need to do is uh, is achieve a very robust and repeatable uh, simple timing lock, which you see this guy here. He, he's kind of locked, but every once in a while, he see how he yes. goes out of lock. I don't know how much you're seeing that, but yeah, no, no, we see it. Um, and you're right. Uh, so that's why we've picked um, everything in the protocol that can help us um, achieve this. And then the second thing after that would be kind of achieving carrier lock. So right now, when this is locked, um, you see a ring mainly because the constellation is spinning, right? Um, and this is, I believe it's, what am I using for a constellation? Um, huh. um, 
it says QPSK, but I, I don't know if that's true or not. I thought it was something else. Uh, Leonard, I think there's a comment. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I can barely hear you. Um, say it again. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Is my audio not getting through? <laughs> uh, it was uh, your audio was really good earlier, and now it's really low. Can you put your mic closer to your face? Um, seriously, okay. Uh, well, no, no, no. That's probably because I'm experimenting with some mixers. Okay, but um, if you can hear me, Leonard, uh, just a small suggestion. I, I, I really can't hear you at all. Wow. We um, can tell. Yeah, we can tell you're talking, um, but we can't. Hear what Can you tell saying what he's saying, saying uh, Michelle? Uh, Ever so often, yes. Give me one second, please. Uh, yeah, the audio, but your audio was very good earlier when you first joined. Uh, how about now, approximately? Is that okay? Or a not? little higher. G go ahead and ask the question, and I can relay right, it. Right, right, right. I just don't want to take up too much time, but. Oh, no problem. Uh, when I was doing, uh, uh, at one point, uh, bench testing between two satellite modems uh, 100 years ago. Um, and we were just doing what the manual said, which is, you know, connect from one to another, uh, whatever, you know, using a coax cable or over the air even, just because the BNC interfaces were just, you know, within the same uh, room. So uh, what I, and we were doing 70 megahertz IF, what I had to do was literally uh, put a large uh, lossy attenuator, a very large lossy attenuator to get it to lock. It was actually so sensitive that it, it would not lock even if we reduced the, the the power level to the minimum power, which was minus 225 dBm for that um, uh, module. Ah. Okay, so do you think the, the problem might be too much power? It's 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 very common, uh, but I, I just, I, okay. I'm, I'm just asking if, if Leonard has, has a one minute to test, could he just yank the antenna out of it or whatever, just to make a, you know, because RF is really, it goes. That might be overloading the receiver or something. And you may somehow. actually be passing the antenna and going to the other wall or other structures of your building and coming back out of phase. So okay. You're not going to be able to lock it. It's just theoretical versus practical know-how. And my friend, uh, uh, Michael Tizena, would beat me up if I didn't actually do this because he would always say, you, you can't assume that your RF will just stop at the antenna. It will keep on going until it hits the car and then come back. Okay. Yeah, we'll. We'll double check that. We've seen similar things in in various labs. I mean, so so fine. Leonard, if you if you didn't hear him, he's he's asking like maybe there is too much power. The signal is uh, overloading. The 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 Pluto is getting overloaded, and we know that the Pluto is an SDR, doesn't have the best filters, and that it might be uh, worthwhile to kind of back off, either add attenuation or back off the power to see if it uh, if that's the issue. And, and also, if it's a, a not shielded, as in like not the antenna, but the chip itself, the Pluto SDR is not in a shielded thing, then, you know, who knows where the RF is going into. It's actually entering into the circuit itself. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. That's just a practical, practical thing. Yeah, so Shamundra like, says that maybe if the, you know, because the lack of shielding in most SDRs and a lot of, of educational equipment, which the Pluto is part of, that the lack of shielding yeah. might be causing some issues too. Yeah, so. it's classic. So, all right, so um, I just restarted this. I added 30 dB of TX attenuation to that. And then um, let me re stop and restart this guy here. All right, so now I sh should have 20, 20 dBs of attenuation. So um, so th this is one thing that I've noticed. Oh, it, interesting. Look at that. Well. I mean, that's, that's sort of what you would expect if you were if it was really quiet, you know, it may be a, a tricky, it might be a tricky spot somewhere in there. Um, but, you um, know, synch synchronization and working on this sort of stuff is is uh, both art, science and and craft. It's all like all the be of. So magic, we'll be able I think that your goal uh, when you said that, you know, we need something that's repeatable and defined and. And here, you know, here's the flow graph with all the configurations and and the the proper setup. I think that's the a really good goal that we should work on um, next. So I I couldn't yeah. agree more. Um, yeah, no, I agree. So one thing that I've noticed is that um, on the Pluto, it's got a, a AGC on there, right? So this one here is a slow attack, which means it just you know it should be slaving the internal gain into, you know, to more or less 
full scale backed off by a couple of bits. Um, and here I, I, I return I, on the tr transmitter, I, you know, I reduced it by 20 dB. So from my, from added 20 more dB of attenuation, it was at 10. Um, but you see that here on the, on the receive side of things, um, the amplitude really, really did get reduced by quite a bit. So the amplitude before was like um, yeah. close to a half and now it's 0.05. So it, it either the receiver has ran run out of of gain, which I don't believe it does. It has a a lot. Of, I mean, the receiver on these chips have a lot of gain, like <laughs> I want to yeah. say like sixty dB or something like that. But anyways, it no, it's um, always it's it's always very reassuring to see that when you change a, a value in GNU Radio, that it actually um, shows up in your, <laughs> in your results. So it's it's a very reassuring result. Anyways, um, I don't want to really take any more time. Um, that's what I have. I'm, it's, okay, thank it's you. Really, from a development perspective, not no code. I mean, there's no really use, useful code other than just uh, kicking the tires on some of these things. I think that uh, just being able to zero in on a simple sync method is, yeah. is, is going to be good. Anyways. No, it's uh, yeah, I agree completely. Thank you. This is super helpful. And being able to see it, you know, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth a thousand pictures. So, you know, you've uh, you've said quite a lot today. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Paul. You have the floor. Hello, everybody. I have uh, nothing to report from Remote Lab West. Everything seems to be working or waiting to be used, uh, no blockers, no resources needed. Wonderful, that's good news. Okay, and it looks like, oh, uh, so we have uh, Tony Stone. Hi, you want to, uh, you have the floor, I'd like to introduce yourself or, or let us know uh, what you're interested in. Tony, W4TAS, I'm just here to listen. Oh, well, you're, Learn. you're very welcome. Uh, any Follow-up questions you have, please go ahead and ask, uh, either email or Slack, no problem. Thank, Thank you so you. much for joining us today. You're welcome.